right? And share my screen. So you guys should be able to see my screen now. Any thumbs up? We can see your screen. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So So um, today we will, uh, we want to do, <clears throat> if you remember last time we said, geez, we uh, start with a two dimensional foil, then we go and understand the three dimensional wing. And then today we are talking about the entire airplane. We wanna characterize the aerodynamics of the entire airplane. So I have uh, maybe, So here is my wing and here is my tail. All right. So uh, for an airplane, I need to decompose it into some components and uh, get the contribution of each component and simply add them together. So in that, in the plane of the page, so the, the airplane can move forward can go up and down and can rotate. And this rotation, we call it pitching motion. And the torque, we call it the pitching moment. So uh, uh, we need to get the components, the contributions from each component of the airplane. So we're gonna, we're gonna divide the airplane into wing and uh, fuselage, which is the body, and horizontal tail and the vertical tail. So say for the lift force on the airplane, well, the vertical tail really doesn't contribute to the lift force. It may contribute later to other things. We will consider it later, but for now, we, we will not take any contribution from the vertical tail on the lift of the airplane. The same for the body. Well, it contributes, of course, to the lift, but uh, negligible with respect to the huge contributions from the wing and tail. So I will simply start with the wing. Maybe I can do this. So my wing here is red. And it's an airfoil shape, right? Maybe. Oops, it's an airfoil shape. So as you guys have seen last time for any three dimensional surface, we have lift drag and pitching moment at the aerodynamic center, right? So the lift is one half row V squared. This is uh, the, you know, the, the summary of the last time, one half row V squared area of the thing. Time is a lift coefficient. The drag is also similar, one half row V squared. Area drag coefficient moment is one half rho v squared area and another length because it's a moment. And we said that this length will be the mean aerodynamic chord times the moment coefficient at the aerodynamic center, right? So, uh, and then also the lift coefficient is CL naught plus CL alpha times alpha of the thing. The CD blah, blah, and the moment coefficient is what? Anybody remembers what was the moment coefficient at the aerodynamic center? Was it? Uh, it's a constant. Exactly, thank you so much. So it's, it's a constant. Typically it's a negative constant for conventional wing and wings and airplanes, All right? So, uh, so this is the, the summary. Now I have several components. So I'm gonna actually, let me take this as copy this whole thing. I'm gonna copy it. Jeez. And I'll take another copy for it, for the tail. So I'm gonna do, maybe I'll take this. 
away. And then we'll go and do this. And take it side by side. Okay. All right. So for my wing and for my horizontal tail, they are both the same. Look at this. So here is my wing in red. Here is my horizontal tail in blue. It's not any different. They are both three-dimensional surfaces, wing-like shapes. It's just the larger of them, of the two. I'm calling it the wing. It's responsible for the lift generation of the airplane. The smaller of the two, this is my tail. And it is responsible for balance and stability, as we're going to discuss later. But for an aerodynamicist, both are exactly the same. There is no fundamental difference between them. So uh, they are governed by the exact same aerodynamics. I will simply use here a subscript W to denote everything for wing, 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 wing. Wing. It's the course with the largest number of subscripts, CL alpha wing, CM aerodynamic center wing, and so and so. And I'm, I'm using another subscript, tail, right? Please, if, I, if you have a question, stop me, because it's going to be a bit uh, more involved as we go today. I have a question? Sure. So the main function of wings uh, to provide lift and uh, and red, uh, stuff. Uh, so, uh, as my understanding, the main function of tail is to balance the current. Am I right or to, to, to provide what? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, to word. to stable the plane. Exactly. Stability and uh, stability control and balance. Yes. This so how do those function um, apply, and the, how do, how 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 does the shape of the tail achieve that? This is the main function of this course. <laughs> so you're gonna, you're gonna learn all this as, as we go. In particular for the tail, over the first few lectures, two, three lectures, you will, you will see how the tail stabilizes and how we can design and size the tail to balance the airplane and stabilize the airplane. Okay, so how do we, uh, do we consider the wing on the top? I don't know, is that called wing? The wing on top? What, what, what? You mean, you mean if the tail is on, on the top of the vertical? No, 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 no. I mean like a, right, right. This this part. So what was the part called in the in the top of the in the back top of the plant? Oh, this is yeah. Thank you. This is the vertical tail. Okay. So so later on we will give it the subscript V for vertical tail, and uh, it is as you can imagine from this picture. So for example, this vertical tail is providing some upward lift and some pitching moment, right? This wing is providing some upward lift and some pitching moment. This vertical tail does not provide either lift or pitching moment, right? It, it provides other things. What other things like side force, for example, which will make the airplane rotate, okay? So uh, later we will, when we talk about uh, rolling and yawing motion of the airplane out of plane motion, we will consider the contribution of the vertical tail. But for this picture, when you look at it, it will not give you any lift. Remember, when we have a wing moving with this forward speed, it gives it gives a force that is, you know, normal to the speed and the surface. So here the surface is flipped, it becomes vertical. So actually the lift force on the vertical tail as a wing-like shape is normal to the page. I, I hope that this is clear enough. So it doesn't contribute to the vertical lift of the entire airplane, this vertical tail, simply because it's flipped. So the vertical tail is, is exactly similar to the horizontal tail, for example, but it's, but it's just flipped. When it's flipped, its force flips as well. So uh, its force 
becomes side force. It's not vertical anymore. So we will consider its contribution later on. We will talk about side force, but for now, for now, what, what is my concern? I, I want to balance the airplane. So I want to make sure that the lift is equal to the weight. And also I want to make sure that it's stable. It doesn't pitch up and down. So uh, lift equals the weight. And, and I want to also look at the pitching moment. So in fact, I will, in this course, in the entire course, I'm going to ignore the drag force. It's not my concern because simply if the airplane experiences more drag than necessary, what will happen? Well, it will consume more fuel, but it will not, will not fall off. But if, if it's not balanced, if it's not rightly balanced, it will fail. Okay, so this is the point. So, so, so the drag force will be one of the main concerns in the other course, 158, the airplane performance. The drag force is one of the main concerns in, in airplane performance, not stability, not stability and balance. All right. Uh, professor, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so for the coefficient of pitching moment at the mm -hmm. aerodynamic center, is that just for the wing or for the whole airplane? That's a very good question. And this is why I have it like this separate. This is wing, purely wing. This is purely tail. And I want to see an appropriate way to add them together to get a similar coefficient for the entire airplane. So this is known from the aerodynamics of a three-dimensional wing. This is also known from the aerodynamics of a three-dimensional wing because the tail is a wing-like surface. Now I want to construct aerodynamics of the entire airplane. So this is my next step for the whole airplane. I'm going to write something similar. The lift, I should have copied it again. The lift is one half rho v squared area times lift coefficient. Whenever I don't assign a subscript, it automatically means the entire airplane. Moment at the aerodynamic center, I'm sorry. Moment is also one half rho v squared area some chord, some length, time is the moment coefficient. And the lift hopefully should be linear in the angle of attack. Nothing will bring nonlinearity or in the small angle of attack regime. Also the moment. So let's talk about the moment for, for, a, for a second. For a three-dimensional or wing-like surface, like the red or blue, a wing-like surface, what is a good reference point? We discussed this last time. From an aerodynamic point of view, a good reference point is the aerodynamic center. And indeed, we take it as a reference point for wing and tail. And as you can see, it makes our life easier. Why? Because it's a fixed point. It's, it's close to the quarter core. And uh, the, the moment at which is constant. Fine. The entire airplane is not a wing-like surface. For us in this course, it's what? It's a rigid body. So can you tell me what is a good reference point for a rigid body? What is that? The center of mass? Exactly, the CG. So here I'm gonna talk about the CG, CMCG. And since it's not an aerodynamic center, the moment will not be constant with the angle of attack. In fact, it will be again like anything else. It's a constant times CM alpha times alpha. All right. So indeed, this is my goal today to construct these equations for the entire airplane. All right. From the individual components, how can I write? How can I add these two to get lift on the entire airplane, moment on the entire airplane, and identify? these characteristics, these constants, these constants are very important to determine the characteristics of the airplane, if it's stable or unstable, or if it's balanced or not. And we're gonna discuss this at the end of the lecture, but the main goal is to write the lift coefficient as number plus another number times alpha. All right, 0.1 plus, you know, 0.5 times alpha, whatever. The same for the same note, 0.1 minus one times alpha and so and so. So I need to get these two numbers and we will learn 
how these two, how we interpret these two numbers for a given airplane to judge its stability and balance, all right? Any question about the goal? Before proceeding, I need to identify what are the reference dynamic pressure and reference area and reference length for the entire airplane. For uh, the wing and tail, they are naturally, naturally defined here. What, are, what is the reference area for the entire airplane? So the community uh, had the following convention is that they took stuff of the wing to be that of the airplane because the wing is the main component of the airplane. So they took S wing to become S for the entire airplane as a reference area. The mean aerodynamic cord is the same. You know, alpha wing is alpha of the entire airplane. Also one half row V squared wing is one half row V squared for the entire airplane. So for now, uh, I will not try it. S wing, alpha wing, and blah, blah. I'll just try them as, as, as follows, all right? Let's proceed. I need some, okay, maybe if it is good. Uh, professor? Sure. Uh, could you scroll back up real quick to, um, yeah, just, just there real quick. Thank you. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, professor, mm -hmm. I had one question really quickly. Sure, please. Um, so as the aircraft travels, it loses fuel, it burns fuel. So exactly. would the center of gravity change significantly or do, are the planes designed specifically so that the center of gravity remains in the same like general area? Amazing question, amazing question. It's one of the most challenging tasks for airplane design and the weight and balance guys is to adjust the CG travel along the trip to be minimal or within known bounds that allow stability uh, despite of the fuel burn. An airplane may lose about 30% or sometimes even 50%, like a huge proportion of its weight in fuel consumption. So the CG if left uncontrolled, it will, will go crazy. You know, it will travel significantly. Yet we, we, we can't allow for that because the, as you're gonna see today, the CG actually affects stability significantly. We, we will talk about this in detail next time. You will see that a, a slight movement of the CG can change the airplane stability characteristics from one regime to another regime. So, so the, the, the short answer is yes, they design it such that the CG travel should not exceed a certain threshold. So this is what we call the fuselage reference line, FRL. You can consider it as a reference axis for the air, entire airplane, maybe the floor cabin or something, all right? And on that, we're gonna have our wing. I will represent my wing with uh, its mean aerodynamic cord. So here is, Maybe this is my wing. So this is Mac mean aerodynamic cord of the wing. All right. So, uh, so this line, this red line is one section here. All right, C bar, okay. And uh, I need to locate the loads. If you remember, we put the loads where? Anybody remembers? Uh, aerodynamic center. Yep, exactly. Aerodynamic center. And where is where 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 is the aerodynamic center? It's the quarter cord. Right? Quarter cord. So if this line, I'm gonna get its quarter. This is the aerodynamic center of the wing. And on at that point, there is lift drag and pitching moment. Uh here is the pitching moment. Fine. So moment at the aerodynamic center wing. And I need to put the lift and drag. So for the lift and drag, I need to know the incident velocity or the flight velocity. If this is the flight velocity V of the entire airplane, as you guys, as we discussed last time, we just make the airplane stationary and allow the wind to come in the opposite direction. All right. So this angle, this angle, what we call the incident angle of the wing. It's like we place the wing 
on the fuselage at some angle, few degrees, two to three degrees. All right. So this is like a sitting angle for the wing. Can you tell me what, what is this angle? Should be the angle of attack. Exactly, very good. This is the angle between velocity, V, and the chord. So this is alpha wing or alpha. I'm gonna put it alpha wing. Fine, so now I got my, uh, the, the direction of the speed so I can, Parallel to it, there is the drag wing. Normal to it, there is the lift wing. All right? So I'm done with the wing. Any question about that? Similarly, here is my MAC, mean aerodynamic cord of the tail, aerodynamic center tail, moment at the aerodynamic center tail, and I need lift and drag. But in order to sketch the lift and drag, I need the direction of the wind, the relative wind or the incoming airspeed, okay? Interestingly, the instant wind on the horizontal tail is different from that on the wing. So in the following sense, so let me use maybe uh, green here. So this is the incident wind. This is V on the horizontal tail. It's not, it's not the same vector as the V on the wing. There is an angle in between called epsilon tail. Epsilon tail, we call it the downwash angle. So any idea why, why the wind changes direction after it passes through? through the wing and moves on the tail surface. Any idea why this happens? Let's see. Is it because mm. there's um, mm. like swirl lines at the tip? Exactly. The yep, exactly. So remember last time we said we have these tip vortices and these tip vortices, they travel. So the ones near there, or actually all of them, they induce very large velocity here, smaller velocity there, smaller downward velocity, downwash. So if I have a wing section, maybe if I have a tail section, maybe let's, let's get it here. Okay. So if I have a tail section, And I have, um, this is say that the coming speed, that is the one on the wing. In addition to this, there is a component downward, this component that I just sketched it, these components, all right? So these vortices will induce a downward air velocity on the tail. This is the one in yellow. So the resultant is this thing. This is exactly the angle epsilon tail, the downwash, all right? Any question about that? And as you can see, what is the source of this downwash? What is the source of it? Well, the source of this down downward velocity is actually the tip vortices that are coming from the wing, which are related to the lift generation on the wing, right? Because lift tip vortices from last time, they are related to the pressure difference from the lower surface to the upper surface. So they are related to the lift generation on the wing. So in fact, the downwash angle at the tail is related to the lift on the wing. And the lifting line theory gives us this nice relation epsilon tail is actually two cl wing over pi aspect ratio of the wing right and since cl wing is a constant plus constant times alpha i can also write epsilon tail as a constant plus a constant times alpha 
all right? Any, anything in this course will be written as a constant plus a constant times alpha. Again, why are we obsessed with alpha? Because alpha represents the flight condition. Once the airplane changes the flight condition, alpha changes automatically. So we wanna study the airplane characteristics at almost all the flight conditions. So it means that we wanna study the airplane characteristics at the entire range of allowable angle of attack. All right, so long story short now is that here on the tail, I don't have the same vector, velocity vector V in black. I have another one in green. So uh, similar to what we did, this is the incident angle of the tail, I tail. And you guys should tell me what is this angle? The angle of attack. Very okay. good. This is alpha tail. Very good. Yeah, and now once I have once I have the incident velocity in green, I can sketch my lift and drag. So parallel to it will be the drag tail. Normal to it will be the lift tail. And here is the CG somewhere here, where I want to I want to transfer all the loads from wing and tail at the CG of the airplane. All right. So uh, let's get the wing contribution. So maybe I put it in red. Wing contribution. Let's transfer the loads of the wing to the CG of the entire airplane. So, uh, and let's start by the moment, moment CG. So when I say moment CG, there is no subscript wing or tail. So it means that it's for the entire airplane. Obviously, it's for the entire airplane because we're talking about the CG. All right. Uh, is it the total moment? No, I'm, I'm, I'm now focusing on the part coming from the wing, wing contribution. So let's give it a symbol. So I'm going to write it as follows. Delta W. What is Delta W means? It's the wing contribution of moment CG. All right. The wing contribution of the moment of the entire airplane at the CG, all right? So the moment of the entire airplane coming from, part of it comes from the wing, another part comes from the tail, and maybe other negligible parts come from other sources, but the main components are wing and tail. Okay, here is the wing part. Let's get it. So uh, what are the loads on the wing? There are simply three loads, two forces and a moment. So the moment transfers always as is. So that's an easy part. So this is moment aerodynamic center wing plus whatever coming. Any question about that? So let's look at the forces. Well, I will need the vertical component multiplied by the horizontal distance and the horizontal component multiplying by the vertical distance, correct? So uh, let's get this angle. This is the vertical. I need this angle. The angle between left and vertical. There is a theorem in geometry all days that the angle between any two lines is the same as the angle between their two perpendiculars. So the perpendicular to the left is the velocity the perpendicular to the vertical is the horizontal. So this angle is the same as the angle between the velocity and the horizontal, this angle, which is simply alpha wing minus I wing, all right? Once I get this angle, I'm gonna do L cosine and D sine. So that's easy, let's, let's do L wing cosine some angle plus D wing sine some the same angle this is the whole force and we have agreed that the angle is simply alpha wing minus i wing questions i'm not done yet because this is the force i need to multiply it with the arm what is the arm so now i got the vertical component so it's along this black i need to multiply it with the horizontal distance between this point and the point I want, which is the CG. And here I'm defining something. Interestingly, this point, which is the start of the 
Mac wing, the start of the leading of the of the mean aerodynamic chord of the wing, we call it uh, the leading edge of Mac, the Mac leading edge. This is the actually origin of the x-axis of the airplane. Again, this these things are by convention of the community. Uh, what do I mean? I mean that the distance between this green point and the CG is called XCG. The distance between this green point and any point, maybe the aerodynamic center, is X aerodynamic center. All right. So simply, if you want the distance between aerodynamic center and CG, subtract the two X coordinates and we're done. So I'm going to multiply here XCG minus X aerodynamic center wing. Any question about that? Are we done for the expression of the moment or we, we're, we're missing something? Any suggestions? Any suggestions? No, you still need the aerodynamics, the MAC of the tail, I think. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I will do that later, but now I'm getting the wing contribution. Anything else left from the loads here to cause a moment at the CG. So I, I transfer the moment as is, fine. But then these two forces, I got the vertical component. I got the moment due to the vertical component. Anything else that I, I missed? You have the horizontal components. Ex exactly. So I'm, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the horizontal component for them, which is easy. So I'm gonna add, it's the same bracket but instead of multiplying by x's, I'm going to multiply by, say, z's, say, z, c, g, minus z, aerodynamic center wing. And uh, <clears throat> this is, it's L, instead of cosine, it will be sine, the same angle, and drag, instead of sine, it will be cosine, the same angle. All right, but let's adjust the signs. So the horizontal component of the drag will be to the right, so it will cause the airplane to pitch up. So, so this is positive. And the horizontal component for the lift is to the left. So it will cause the airplane to pitch down. So this will be negative. And uh, I will just say, you know, I will write this as just delta z. It will go away anyway, I'll, I'll tell you why now. But this is the exact expression for the moment at the CG coming from the wing. I'm done and this is exact, there is nothing more. And um, there is something important here that we need to discuss. In this course and probably all the, all the courses in, 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 in your undergrad, we're never interested in, in, in doing like a, a damn accurate analysis. We are interested in doing some useful analysis in the preliminary design phase. So in the preliminary design phase of an airplane or any large project, we intentionally don't do a very accurate analysis. What we use is what we call low fidelity models. So low fidelity models, they are not that accurate, but they are fast and efficient and reasonably accurate. Why is that? Because of two main reasons. First of all, in the preliminary design phase, we need to check or scan like thousands, if not millions of design alternatives. So if I am very meticulous and my model is so accurate, it will take long time to compute, I will not be able to afford, I will not be able to finish on time and you know, analyze all these design alternatives. I need something really quick and dirty and give me some reasonable accuracy. This is from one point of view that I will not have the time to <clears throat> analyze all the design alternatives, the million design alternatives, design candidates using a very accurate model. This is one thing. But second and actually more important, is that a very accurate model will, will need detailed description anyway. I mean, if I'm gonna do a, a very detailed analysis of the airplane, 
Fine, so I need all the details of the airplane. But in the preliminary design phase, I don't have these details anyway. So, uh, so a very detailed analysis is not convenient in the preliminary design phase. And we need to use low fidelity models, which are reasonably accurate, but quite efficient and fast. This means that whenever we have an exact expression like this, we're gonna use our engineering talent to judge the relative weight of, of terms with respect to each other to neglect the, ne the negligible ones, the ignorable ones, and focus on the important ones. For example. Professor, oh, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, what are the angles and the horizontal part of the wing contribution? It's the same. Because, okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, so it's L cosine here gives you the vertical, L sine, the same angle gives you the horizontal. Let me write here, so alpha wing minus I wing, alpha wing minus I wing. So you. uh, yeah, you're welcome. These angles are small. So like alpha, I mean, alpha wing is like, I don't know, maybe five degrees. And this I wing is like three degrees. The, the difference is two, three degrees. Cosine three degrees, like I don't point nine nine, and, and the sine of it is I don't know point uh, oh three or something. So this is like thirty times or fifty times that the cosine is thirty times the sine for a very small angle, thirty to fifty. And lift is much larger than drag for a conventional airplane, right? It's what maybe around fifteen for a conventional airplane may go down to seven for fighter airplane, go up for 20 for a glider airplane. So this is 15 times that, this is 30 times that. So the multiplication of two small numbers is negligible with respect to the multiplication of two large numbers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore this multiplication. Any question about that? And I'm gonna do it over and over again in the following sense. So let's compare this term, the first term with the last term. It's the same cosine, but now the lift is about 15 times the drag. And don't, don't forget that we have delta X is here versus delta Zs. Delta X is, is the difference in distance along the longitudinal axis on the airplane. Delta Z is the difference along the vertical. Obviously distances along the longitudinal is much larger than distance along the vertical. So now again, I'm multiplying two small numbers, delta Z and drag versus two large numbers, delta X and lift. So I'm gonna neglect this term also. Finally, let's compare this term and that term. It's the same lift force, but now I'm comparing cosine to sine, which is 30 to 50 times. I'm comparing delta X versus delta Z. So again, this will be negligible. And the only term that's gonna sustain this massacre is, is that term. So left wing times cosine, and also cosine the angle is, is almost unity. Like I said, it's 0 0.99. So this is left wing times XCG minus X aerodynamics interval. And you, simply, you could have told me that from the beginning. If I'm telling you, can you give me an approximate expression for the moment at the CG? I know that this moment at the aerodynamic center will transfer as is. And I know from all this that the lift is the dominant force and it's almost vertically upward. I'm simply gonna multiply by Delta X and I'm done. And you're allowed to do that in the exam if you know what you're doing, you know? I trust you that you can do it detailed like this and, and ignore the, the terms that are not important and, and come with, come at the final expression like this. So if you want to write it from the get-go, that's fine for exams, homework, quizzes, or whatever. Any question about this black line? The, the expression will change when we enter different, like significantly different angles of alpha, right? So like, for example, if we're going to like stall range or something like that. That's a very good question. And this is, you know, during the, this entire course and your other also courses in, the, in undergrad, we will, we will not touch at all. <laughs> yes, but if you're doing an analysis uh, near stall for some reason, like you're, you're really studying maybe the stall characteristics of an airplane, you know, you're, you're not allowed to do that. 
you're, you will not be allowed to do any of most of the stuff that, that you get in your undergraduate stuff. I mean, you, you will you'll try to build your own knowledge based on what you learn. You know, it's, it's, it's totally new world in the store. Everything is nonlinear. Even the simple fact that you increase the lift, that you increase the angle of attack, the lift increases, this is destroyed, right? Because remember, this is a stall. So uh, look around here, what happens? So here I increase angle of attack from here to there, the lift increases, fine. I increase again, the lift increases. Then I increase the angle of attack, the lift does not increase. In fact, I increase the angle of attack again, the lift decreases. And I increase it again, the lift decreases. I increase it again, the lift doesn't increase. And then so and so. So it's it's there's a very simple fact based on which the entire aerodynamic science is based, and based on which the entire flight mechanics is based. Uh, the simple fact is is the fact that you increase the angle of attack, the lift increases. This is this no longer holds during stall. It's quite disrupting. So this is why you know, really airplanes they they, they don't touch this. Some airplanes, even, even the fighter ones, like F-16, for example, F-18, they have something called alpha limiter. Like even if the pilot wanna, wanna go there, the autopilot will interfere and prevent the pilot from executing this mission because it's so dangerous. But yes, of course, you're, you're totally right. If you, if you are intentionally you want to analyze stall characteristics, so this will not be the case. You cannot do these assumptions. Any question about this black line? All right, let's move forward. What is my goal? I'm reminding you of my goal. Here's my goal. I want to get, I want, once I get the lift and moment, now I just get the moment here. I'm gonna normalize it to get this, the moment coefficient. I'm never interested in the, in the moment itself or the lift itself. We're always interested in the coefficients. Why? Because this moment, the dimensional one, this moment will be very large for large airplanes, very small for small airplanes. I will not be able to compare airplanes with each other. So I need something that is dimensionless, non-dimensional, right? So we always divide, normalize to get the non-dimensional quantity. And once I get the non-dimensional quantity, I want to extract what is the constant part of it and what is the part that varies with alpha, all right? So let's do that. So let's normalize now. Let's normalize. I'm gonna remember that first of all, this is um, for the wing. This thing was one half rho v square. Maybe wing, s wing, c bar wing, c m aerodynamic center wing. Plus one half rho v square wing, s wing. This is for the lift, there is no C bar. CL wing times delta X, X C G minus X aerodynamic center wing. And I'm gonna divide all this by one half rho V squared for the entire airplane, S for the entire airplane, C bar for the entire airplane, right? To get the CMCG for the entire airplane. And this is the wing contribution of it. Any question about that? As you can see, uh, since the community chooses the reference things for the airplanes to be those of the wing, they will cancel here. So the first term, the C bars also will cancel and I will get the CM aerodynamic center wing plus the second term, I will get CL wing times XCG minus X aerodynamic center wing over C bar. Any question about that? Once I got the moment coefficient, I need to identify what is constant and what is linear in alpha, right? So let's identify that. CM aerodynamic center wing, what do you think about that? Is it constant or varies with alpha? Hmm. That's gotta be constant, right? Exactly, very good. What about CL wing? Is it constant or varies with alpha? That varies with alpha. Yes, and I know it's variation. It's simply CL naught plus something times alpha, 
right? Okay, so for this whole green expression, can, can you please identify what is constant? I'm gonna call it CM naught. And what varies with alpha, I'm gonna call it CM alpha, simply. And we will be done. So what is constant here? Well, it's CM aerodynamic center wing. We said that this is constant. Plus, whatever constant coming from this expression. Well, this expression has a constant plus a linear term in alpha. So the constant term is with me, CL naught wing times the delta X. So uh, the second term is actually varies with alpha. So it will go here. So here I have CL alpha wing times XCG minus X aerodynamic center wing over C bar. And we're done. This is the wing contribution for these two constants, CM naught and the CM alpha, the part that is constant in the moment characteristics and the part that changes with the angle of attack. Remember here, I wanna stress something because <clears throat> it's, it's always confusing. Here is the moment coefficient. I want to eventually write it as a number plus a number times alpha. Say 0.1 minus 1.5 times alpha. The constant is called CM naught. And the terms that varies linearly with alpha, the coefficient of alpha, the thing that is beside alpha, I call it CM alpha. Okay. So from this expression, from this whole green expression, the constant term is this guy is constant. Here, this guy is constant. But then this guy is multiplied alpha. So this is the thing that goes and constructs my CM alpha. Any question about that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't know what delta W C N is. Uh, is like a moment? Let's see. Where, where, Not, where is it? Uh, I mean, like what we're solving for in general, like the whole expression, what is it? The delta the, W. Mm -hmm. Here is the whole expression. So this is this is the goal. What's the goal? I want to get the moment on the entire airplane, CMCG, right? The moment and uh, its coefficient is called CMCG, okay? Now this CMCG, eventually I will write it as a constant plus a constant times alpha, fine. But remember, this is for the entire airplane. So each thing here has two contributions, at least one coming from the wing and one coming from the tail. So these two constants, each one of them has two contributions, one coming from the wing and one coming from the tail. So this thing is what? This is the CM of the entire airplane at the CG. This is the wing contribution of it, right? This is the part that's coming from the wing. I'm gonna do repeat this analysis again and get the part that's coming from the tail and simply add them together. All right. Questions? Can you uh, give me the, the tail part? Let me, let me take this maybe. Uh, I will copy this. I'll take it again down. Let's talk about the tail contributions. It's so this was in green. Okay, so um, the tail contribution, let's transfer the loads of the vertical tail from the vertical tail to the CG. So I'm gonna write delta tail, the tail contribution of the moment at the CG equals. I can, I can, you know, do it in detail like here and try to use my intuition and reduce it later. But can you, can you give it to me directly? I know that the moment transfers as is, so that, that's easy. Plus, 
can you give it to me directly? What, what it would be? What is the main force that you're going to transfer? Lift and drag. The lift and drag, but we, you know, our intuition here, I mean, when we did this, really the drag cancels. So it's simply, simply going to be the lift force, the vertical component of the lift force multiplying by the, the horizontal distance. And this horizontal distance of the tail, because it's so important, actually, we give it a name. This is what we call L tail. It's the, the moment arm of the tail. So simply this large L tail in blue, the lift force, multiplying this little L tail distance, this is the moment. Is it positive or negative moment? Is it pitching up or pitching down? This should be pitching down, so it's negative, right? Exactly, yes. So this is negative. So I'm actually done here. This is approximately the thing. Yes, I can do L cosine and drag sine and multiplying by the horizontal and L sine, drag cosine, multiplying by the vertical, but it will boil down to something similar and all the drag signs and all the drag Z, delta Zs and all this will cancel and I will only be left with the vertical force, which is almost, it's the lift force multiplying by the horizontal distance. This is the case here. The lift force, the vertical force is the lift force. And here is the horizontal distance. And I just adjust the sign. Any question about this blue line? So let's keep going. I'm gonna expand my moment aerodynamic center tail as one half rho v squared, add the tail, area tail, c bar tail, cm aerodynamic center tail. And I will expand the lift at the tail as one half rho v squared tail, area tail, cl tail, here's l tail, cl tail. One thing I want you to know here, actually, when we're talking about wing and tail. So wings, the main function of the wing is to any, what is the main function of the wing? Uh, to provide lift. Very good, to provide lift. So the larger the lift from the wing, the better. So of course, we typically use cambered surfaces for the wing because camber provides you more lift. It provides you actually lift at zero angle of attack. They have CL note at zero angle of attack. They have CL note that is non-zero. Symmetric shapes, they don't have CL note as we discussed last time. We use cambered shapes for the wing, of course. But for the tail, the main function is not to provide lift. The main function is to provide balance and control. So there is no compelling reason to use a cambered surface for, for tails. They are actually, typically they are symmetric airfoils. So what this means is that they don't have CL note and they don't have uh, CM aerodynamic center. Let me use different color that is significant here, maybe clear. This is zero because they are symmetric shapes, right? So just to simplify our analysis. So in fact, when I come here for the moment aerodynamic center tail, this is zero. And I remember that this is only CL alpha times alpha tail. There is no CL note part. All right. So uh, I got the tail contribution to the moment. I'm never interested in the moment. I'm always interested in the coefficient. So the next step is to normalize, divide this by one half rho v squared area C bar for the entire airplane, because I'm talking about the entire airplane. So now the first term goes away, the second term, which is the negative term, now they don't cancel anymore. One half rho V squared tail divided by one half rho V squared for the airplane, which is that of the wing. And we already agreed that the velocity vector is changes direction at least 
after passing through the wing. So what hits the tail is different from what on the wing. This is in direction, fine. What about magnitude? Why it's different in magnitude? Because remember we have jets coming from the engine. We have propeller. So in general, they are not exactly the same. And this ratio, we call it eta. This one, we call it eta tail. All right. And then I have S tail over S. L tail over C bar, they don't cancel. And I have CL alpha tail, alpha tail, all right? Any question about that? Can you tell me what is the next step or at least what is the next goal? What, like, what do I need to get out of this expression? What do I need to identify? Should we make the alpha t to alpha and the epsilon t? This is great. This is amazing. So yeah, but you jump with one step ahead. So what do I need to extract from here is simply I want to identify what is constant and what is what varies with alpha, right? But what alpha? Well, I'm talking about the entire airplane. And we agreed or the community had the convention that the things for the airplane is the things for the wing. So I need to identify here what is constant and what varies linearly with alpha of the wing. Okay, this is alpha of the airplane. If this were alpha of the wing or for the airplane, that would be easy because I don't have any constant term. And here is the term that is multiplying alpha. I'm done. Unfortunately, it's not alpha of the wing or alpha of the airplane. This is alpha of the tail. And we already know that it's, they are different. So simply, simply, I need to relate alpha tail to alpha wing. That's it from geometry. So let's relate alpha tail to alpha wing from this figure. Let's take a deep breath and do it in a one minute or something. Pure geometry. Here is alpha tail. What is alpha tail? In this diagram is actually, let me write it. Alpha tail is I tail plus some angle. This angle. Let's call it A. What is this angle? It's the angle between the green velocity vector on the tail and the horizontal. Remember the, uh, the goal is to relate alpha tail to alpha wing all the way. So let me see this pink angle here. Again, this is the angle between green and horizontal. Here is the angle between green and horizontal. This is A. All right. And now, this A is this whole angle. So this A is this whole angle. Let's call it B, for example. Oops. Let's call it B. Minus epsilon tail. Correct. A is the whole B minus epsilon tail. And what is B? B is the angle between the black velocity and the horizontal. Angle between black and the horizontal. This is B here. Let me write it in black. And actually, we got it before. It's simply alpha wing minus I wing. So B is alpha wing minus I wing. So that's an expression. You don't need to do it, um, you know, one more time. We did it once for the entire course. Whenever you want to relate the alpha tail to alpha wing, here is the relation. The relation is simply, or here it is. Let me write it in black. Alpha tail is alpha wing minus I wing plus I tail minus epsilon tail.
let me take this and we'll go down and we'll put it here and i will expand it further why because remember this epsilon tail is epsilon naught plus something times alpha so actually my alpha tail is well all the constant terms well it's i tail minus i wing minus epsilon naught plus one minus d epsilon by the alpha times alpha that is now clear so alpha tail itself it has a constant term plus some term times alpha so that makes things easy why because here is the expression i had from the beginning it is something times alpha tail and alpha tail itself it's a constant plus a constant times alpha so now the wing contribution for the cm naught of the entire L plane is the term that is constant here. So this whole coefficient times the constant term here. And I will take a negative sign and multiply it here to make it positive. So positive what? Eta tail. This thing, we call it VH. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. CL alpha tail, epsilon naught plus I wing minus I tail. And the term, I'm sorry, you guys, seems that you uh, are not following. Are you following? I want to identify the term that is multiplying alpha here. Delta tail CM alpha is everything from here I'm multiplying this. So there is negative eta tail. I'm going to write VH again. TL alpha tail, 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha. And we're done. So what is this VH? Well, uh, you, can, you can see it. It's, uh, this is an area times the length divided by an area times the length. So an area times the length is, has the, 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 the unit of a volume. So we actually call it VH, which is the vertical or horizontal tail volume ratio. Tail volume ratio. VH. It, it gives you how strong your horizontal tail is why because the larger the area of the horizontal tail of course the more the larger the aerodynamic contribution and what is l tail well l tail is this distance it's the tail moment arm like even even if the horizontal tail is small and producing a small lift force but this little l tail the distance is large it will cause a large moment so the multiplication of the two provides you know how effective your horizontal tail is, all right? See, we have a question. Yes, equation sheet exam. Uh, for homework, no, of course, no. For homework, you have the notes. You can use whatever you like. They are not closed book, right? For exam, yes, you will, you will, you will be provided by a cheat sheet. Actually, you will prepare your own cheat sheet. We'll talk about this when we come to the exams. Yes, we have tons of equations in this course, but you don't need to memorize anything. So in summary, that was a lot. Let's summarize and see why we're doing all this. This is like crazy. Why we're doing all this? So let's get this thing. This is the wing contribution, right? And we just derive the tail contribution. So the CM note for the entire airplane, now, now for the entire airplane, 
the whole airplane. I have Excuse the me, moment. Professor. Yes, please. Sorry, what is VH? VH is this thing. The horizontal tail volume ratio is S tail times L oh. tail over S C bar. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Welcome. CMCG for the entire airplane is a constant plus a, another constant times alpha. How can I get this thing? What is this CM note? Well, this has two contributions, one from the wing and one from the tail. Also, this has two contributions, one from the wing and one from the tail. Okay. The wing one are here, delta wing CM naught, delta wing CMR. The tail ones are here, delta tail CM naught, delta tail CMR. So if, if I provide you with all these things in the right hand side, you should be able to give me two numbers. CM of the entire plane is a number plus a number times alpha. Okay, fine. Why are we obsessed with these two numbers? What is the significance of these two numbers? Why should we care? Because of the following, Let, let's, let's study this. This is super important. So here is alpha and CM depends on alpha, the moment. This is the moment on the airplane. Let's consider the effect of CM alpha. So the CM versus alpha is a linear relation. It's a line. So it has a constant and it has a slope. The effect of CM alpha is simply the slope of the line. Let's see what do we need this slope? Do we need it to be positive or negative, for example? So let's consider two figures. One, this is positive CM alpha. And one with negative CM alpha. All right? Which one do we like? How should we design our airplane? Should we design it to have a positive CM alpha or a negative CM alpha? Let's see. So what is the operating point of the airplane? When the airplane is flying at cruise, what is the value of CM? Can you tell me? Zero. Zero, very good. Why? Because if there is any moment or any unbalance in the force or the moment, the airplane is cruising, meaning submission, all forces are zero, submission, all moments are zero. Lift equal weight, thrust equal drag, all forces balance each other and the submission forces are zero. Otherwise, there's gonna be some acceleration. If I'm flying cruise at constant speed, there are no accelerations, no, no translational acceleration, no rotational acceleration. So summation all forces equal zero, summation all moments equal zero. So in particular, the pitching moment is zero. So this is my operating point. All right, the, the point at which, this is the angle of attack at which the moment equals zero. This is my cruise, fine. So I'm balanced here. What if I, I am perturbed a little bit? What if my airplane experienced some gust, some wind, a little bit extra wind, so it increased the angle of attack by some delta alpha like this. Let's see what happened. Let's see the purple curve. The purple curve says, now if you're operating at this point, actually this is your, this will be your new pitching moment. Previously it was zero, everything, everything was fine. We were flying at balance it. The moment was zero. You're perturbed a little bit. So you're pitched up a little bit. Once you pitch it up a little bit, what happens? The new moment is a positive moment, which is a pitching up moment. So it will cause you to pitch up even more. So you will go in this direction at which your moment is even more larger in positives. So it will cause you to pitch up even more and more. The situation is getting exacerbated even more and more. This situation is what we call unstable. So an airplane with a positive CM alpha is actually unstable. So what about negative CM alpha? Let's see. So if you're perturbed a little bit and you become here, 
the new moment, if you're operating on the green curve, the new moment is what? Is negative. So negative, it's pitching down. So it will, it will cause you to pitch down back to your equilibrium position. So once you're perturbed in the positive alpha, pitching up, it will cause you a negative moment, an opposing moment, a restoring moment to cause you to go back to your equilibrium or balanced position. Any question about that? So we call it stable. Any question? So airplane manufacturers, the FAA, everybody in the aeronautical engineer on the aeronautical engineering community, they are obsessed with this CM alpha. Like if there is only one take home message that you're gonna get out of this entire course, it will be CM alpha negative, all right? And I always give some jokes about this and you know, so, some students when they email me back saying, okay, I mean, uh, they want recommendation letters, they email me back. Hey, hi, Tham. Uh, we're greeting you, CM alpha negative, and then they start their emails, you know, it's so this like the greeting, it's, you know, CM alpha, I want you to be obsessed with the fact that CM alpha must be negative for an airplane. And if you can look here, look at the wing contribution, like the, the same, so okay, my CM alpha for the entire airplane, I need it to be negative, some negative number, say negative one, okay. So this negative one is the addition of two numbers, one coming from the wing and one coming from the tail. All right, so this is wing contribution, wing contribution. This is tail contribution and tail contribution. So this negative one, it has some number from the wing and some number of them from the tail. They add together and the result is negative one. Let's see how much the wing provides and how much the tail provides. Let's go to the wing contribution now. Look at this, CL alpha wing. What do you think about CL alpha wing? Is it a positive or negative number? It's positive, right? It's positive, right? This is the two pi kind of thing or a little bit different from two pi, but it, we're not about the exact number. It's, it's always positive, of course. This is, CL alpha positive means that when you increase the angle of attack, the lift increase. Of course, this is the, the very fact that we're operating at. And what about this difference? Well, let's, let's look here. Typically the CG is behind the aerodynamic center. So XCG is larger than X aerodynamic center. So this difference is also positive. We're here. The CL alpha wing is positive. This difference is positive. So delta wing CM alpha is what? Positive. It's positive. And we need CM alpha for the entire airplane to be negative. So the wing is destabilizing. So the wing alone, oops, wings are red, right? In this picture, at least. Wing is destabilizing. And this is why we need horizontal tail. Or, and this is why it's extremely challenging to design a tailless airplane. So let's look at the tail contribution. So the wing contribution to CM alpha is positive, is destabilizing. Hopefully the tail sh contribution should be negative to be stabilizing and negative enough, large enough to outweigh the wing contribution. So let's see, delta tail CM alpha. The first thing that strikes you is that it's negative. Hopefully the rest will be positive. Eta tail is a ratio of dynamic pressures. Of course, it's positive. VH is a ratio of volumes. It's positive. CL alpha tail, like CL alpha wing, is positive. This d epsilon by the alpha is typically in the range of 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So this difference is positive. Everything is positive and I had negative outside. So the tail contribution is negative, is stabilizing because it's in the back. So that's good. If I have it in the front, what we call canard, it will be destabilizing. We don't do that. So you put the tail in the back. So, and you can see it depends on what? Horizontal tail volume ratio, which is simply area tail and L tail. So if you want this to be large enough in negative, of course, design it with a large enough horizontal tail. This is the problem that we're gonna solve next time. How much you can size your horizontal tail to adjust the stability of the entire airplane. Any question about that? Questions? Uh, I have a general question sure. about stability. Mm -hmm. um, so for merged wing aircraft, they typically don't have a tail 
um, because the wing is like merged in the body of the fuselage. So how do they deal with this stability issue? That's they don't a, have something. That, that's a very good question. The, the, we will talk about this maybe in one or two lectures, but uh, you can you can do it as long as your CG is is in the front and uh, and uh, your aerodynamic. Since you have a you have a wing only, it's like a flying wing, right? When you have a wing, then all what you have is the aerodynamic center of the wing and its relation to the CG. So uh, you can typically make the airplane naturally stable either by one of two things. Try to move the CG forward and uh, make the forward in, in front of the aerodynamic center of the wing using some weight and balance or a sweep back of the wing. Typically these airplanes are swept back, highly swept back. This is one option. The other option is that fine. I mean, I can have an unstable airplane and design a flight control system to stabilize it. Like there are tons of fighter airplanes that are unstable in flight, but the flight controllers stabilize them like F-16, for example. So these are the two options immediate. And actually this is the, this is the main goal of the course that throughout the course, we will learn how to do both, how to size our airplane to be naturally stable. And if not, if not, if not possible, how to design a flight controller to stabilize it using feedback control. Gotcha, thank you. You're welcome. So that was about the CM alpha. Where is the thing? Okay, here. So this is the moment characteristics of the entire airplane. It is characterized by two numbers, the slope, and we discussed its effect on stability. It's super important. And uh, this constant, we, let's discuss it in the, in this few more, few minutes. Uh, here is, so CM naught is the constant, right? So effect of CM naught. Again, this is alpha, this is CM, and we learned the lesson already that we need a negative slope. So I'm gonna compare two lines of negative slope. One line here of a negative slope, and one line there of a, yeah, also of a negative slope. So they should be parallel to each other. I'm sorry about that. So let me make them parallel. But they are different in CM naught. So here, CM naught, this is the value of CM naught. So this is CM naught positive. And this is CM naught negative. This is the value of CM naught is negative, all right? Questions about that? Let's compare which one is favorable uh, in for design, for operation. What is the point I'm looking for? It's the operating point. It's the cruise point, which is the point at which what happens? The moment is zero. The moment is zero. Very good. So the point at which moment is zero, here is your point, and here is your point. Which one you guys prefer? Why? I should pitch up by default, right? Exactly. Uh, any reason for that? Uh, well, because if you take your hand off the stick, you don't want your plane to, you know, go into the ground. I guess. Well, close enough. So, so let's see. So, yes, exactly. Here, my cruise point happens at a positive angle of attack. Here, it happens at a negative angle of attack. Remember, I need some positive angle of attack to generate lift. Otherwise, a negative angle of attack may generate very small lift, if not even negative lift. So, I, this is not a flyable point. I will not be able to balance my airplane. The balance is not only CM is zero. The balance is all the forces and moments are zero. So if your moment is zero, you still need to satisfy all forces are zero, which means that you need to generate lift enough to carry the weight. So here I would be able to generate lift enough to carry the weight. Here I would not be able to do so. So this is the point that we design at. So the requirement is that CM note must be positive. And please don't confuse. They are opposite each other. We want CM note to be positive and the slope CM alpha to be negative, all right? So again, let's look at the wing and tail contribution quickly. What is the wing contribution for CM naught? Let's see. So this difference, we said that it's positive and this is positive. 
but but frankly speaking, this difference is, is very small, sometimes even zero. The CG is always around the aerodynamic center of the wing. So the fact is that this term is the dominant term. What do you think about this term? CM aerodynamic center for a wing or a tail or anything, well, particularly a wing, I'm sorry. Anyone can guess CM aerodynamic center for a wing? Does that pitch down also? Exactly. This is same aerodynamic center is, is a constant, if you remember from last time, and it's a, it's a negative constant. So this is negative out and usually outweighs this, makes the wing contribution to this constant mostly negative, which is again, not favorable. If you look at the tail contribution, here is a positive that strikes you. And let's check the other terms. Eta tail is always positive. VH is a volume ratio is positive, CL alpha is positive, and I need these angles to come out positive. If they don't, you have a player to play with here, I tail, the incidence angle of the tail, you got to decide as a flight dynamicist and designer, how you're gonna place your tail, by what angle to make this whole thing positive, so that to make this whole thing positive and positive enough, to outweigh the wing contribution so that the entire airplane have favorable characteristics. Any questions about that? Professor, real quick, uh, what's the difference between CM naught and CM alpha? Very good, so for a line, when you have a line like this, CM alpha is the, the thing multiplying by alpha, so this is the slope of the line. CM alpha is the slope of this line. But CM naught is the, is the value of CM at alpha equals zero. So it's this distance in the green curve and it's that distance in the purple curve. It's negative here, it's positive there, all right? Thanks. CM alpha affects stability. Negative is stable, positive is unstable. CM naught affects balance, right? Here, a balance or equilibrium. Here, CM naught is positive, we achieve Balance at a positive angle of attack. CM not negative, we achieve balance at a negative angle of attack. So I think this is the last statement and I'm done, is that we want CM not to be positive for balance at alpha positive to generate lift, right? And again, the tail is the one that contributes to this. All right, guys, any... Questions, we're done for today. I'm gonna stop share. Any questions? Have right. a good day, Professor. Thank you. Um, so for the tail contribution of the coefficient of a moment for alpha, so CM alpha for tail contribution. Mm -hmm. um, should there be an alpha at the end? So that's negative a, eta that, plus that, that, That's a very good question. So, and uh, uh, like I said, it's always confusing. Let me tell you this. So, so look at this. So CM is a number plus a number times alpha. So the coefficient of alpha without the alpha, this is what we call CM alpha, all right? So, here for the tail contribution, look at the tail contribution. This is the tail contribution. It's blah, 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 blah times alpha tail and alpha tail is a constant plus a constant times alpha. So everything beside alpha without the alpha, that is what we call CM alpha, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the yeah. alpha term is uh, in the overall yes. equation. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly, exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Professor, like, uh, what's the form of the homework where we have? Uh, you'll see. I mean, you will try to uh, actually, uh, let me, uh, I'm not sharing my screen, right? Yeah. You will, the problem maybe will be uh, something like uh, you will give a, you will be given a different configuration and instead of wing and tail behind, maybe wing and tail in front, what we call canard and try to go through this process similarly, line by line, to produce the canard contribution and wing contribution and so on. So, 
Okay. So right. when will we, you assign the homework? Uh, probably today. Okay, I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? Uh, just to uh, just to clarify the submission, it would just be like us scanning the PDF of our answer right? yeah, and uploading yes. it. Okay. Yes, exactly. Got it. Yeah. Um, hi, Professor. I have mm -hmm. a question about the the CM alpha regarding um the the stable and unstable part. Mm -hmm. Um. So basically, um, why CM alpha uh is uh, why, why CM alpha greater than zero is unstable is because um, the pitching is upward, so the angle of attack is keep increasing. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, professor? Yeah. I had a question about the tail contribution to CM naught. Yeah. Uh, firstly, for that equation, is it the uh, or the tail the in the parentheses for that equation, um, is it epsilon not uh, plus or is that a t? Uh, yes, it's it's plus. I'm sorry, it's epsilon not. Let me even make it clear okay, here. So, so that when I, yeah, thank you. So that when I upload it, it becomes um, so. Okay. Yes, it's epsilon naught plus I wing minus I tail. Yeah. Got it. And um, furthermore, is um, if the tail is usually asymmetric airfoil, how does it have a positive uh, CM naught? Usually, is it? Oh, no. So that's a very good question. So the tail, where is it? The tail as a symmetric airfoil, it does not have any CM node. It actually, it's CM node, which is the CM aerodynamic center, is zero. So in its own frame, it doesn't, you see this moment in blue? This moment is zero on the horizontal tail. But the point is, it has a lift. And this lift transfers to the CG, so it creates a moment. This moment, due to this lift, now, has characteristics that is constant and varies with the angle of attack. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah. So okay, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's own, its own CM note is zero, but its contribution to the pitching moment characteristics of the entire airplane may not be zero because we transfer it at a oh. different point. And, and also, and when I say CM note, uh, we mean, with respect to the angle of attack of the tail, yes. But now we're also talking about with respect to the angle of attack of the wing, which are different. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So for the yeah. whole plane, I mean, I yes. guess since the position of the tail itself with respect to the CG, the contribution. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's the same reason for why the wing is usually a negative. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Contribution, right? Yes, yes. Got it. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Questions? Hi, Professor. Um, can you explain one more time why CM not is positive? Sure. Let's see. So from here, we already concluded that CM alpha must be negative. CM alpha is the slope. So I draw two lines having the same negative slope but one with a positive CM note and one with a negative CM note. CM note is the value of, of the CM at alpha equal zero. So at alpha equal zero for this green curve, the CM is positive. For this one, the CM is negative. This is the value of CM note. What, I'm, what we are always concerned with is the balance point, is the cruise point, which is we're always cruising at lift equal weight and the CM is zero. The moment is zero. This is the moment zero point. This is the moment zero point for the two uh, characteristics for the two candidate airplanes. One attains its cruise at a positive angle of attack. The other attains its cruise at a negative angle of attack. Well, we're saying that actually this will not even 
allow crews. Why? Because at a negative angle of attack, I will not be able to generate enough lift to carry the weight. Whereas here, I will be able to generate enough lift to carry the weight. So uh, this is why we favor CM naught to be positive, or we require CM naught to be positive, so that this characteristics is the characteristics that we want. This is negative slope, and it, it crosses the, the, the alpha axis at zero moment at a positive angle of attack. I can fly at a positive angle of attack, fine. Okay, got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. So I guess like this is represents like an initial like <clears throat> a configuration of the tail because obviously the tail can change its characteristics. So yes. maybe I mean, that's probably what the course is all about. But like, basically, we we change the CM alpha of the tail or the CM not of the tail to a different like set point and then the dynamics of the airplane basically pushes us towards that set point and then that's how we are going to control like the pitch exactly this right. is exactly this is how if this is the nominal maybe this green line will be the nominal during cruise but i want to also do control so the effect of changing the configuration of the tail either by elevator or by changing the tail itself will allow this figure to change parallel to itself up and down so that I can cross this axis at the point I want. You see what I'm saying? So this is, yes, exactly. This is what the course is about. So in, in the next two lectures, we will uh, go deeper into, into the tail effect, not only for balance and, and, and stability like today, but for control, I need to go switch from one one flight condition to another how can i do that with the tail so in this case it will not be only one line it will be a family of lines depending on the the tail configuration cool and it's all nice because it's linear but Ex exactly yes <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah cool <laughs> yeah all right mike Okay, guys, I'll uh, see you next time, next week. Uh, thank you, Professor. Question. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Question? Real quick. Yeah, sure. Uh, could I see the equation for the tail contribution to the CM alpha one more time? Sure. CM alpha here. Okay. Got it. Just missed the subscribe. Yeah, yeah. That's... Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.